the gap between the percentage of young offenders and adults serving jail time in Queensland has been revealed. 25% of the 106 youths who were found guilty of grievous bodily harm received detention. That's compared to 84% of adults. The data also shows 90% of adults are jailed for aggravated robbery, while only 14% of youths face incarceration for the same offence. Well, joining me live now is criminal justice and criminology expert Terry Goldsworthy. Terry, good morning. Thanks for your time. What did you make of this latest data and does it surprise you? Yeah, good morning. Look, it doesn't surprise me. This just confirms what we all suspected and what I uh, have known for some years, that, uh, you know, not many of our youth offenders are going to detention. I mean, the Queensland Children's Court annual report last year told us that of the matters that went to court, only 8% of them ended up with a detention order for a youth offender. And there are only the more serious matters that go to court. Alongside that, we had about 4,500 matters go to court. We had 15,000 cautions given by the police and 2,500 uh, youth conferences. The interesting thing is, is that those court diversion processes, cautions and uh, conferences, we're seeing a recidivism rate, a re-offending rate of 60% plus in those kids within 12 months. So something's not quite right. And where people say that we're sending all our kids to jail, it's simply a fallacy. Absolutely. So, I mean, does the low rate of detention for young criminals prove that change is desperately needed? Look, uh, what you've seen is that this government in Queensland since about 2016 has generally weakened the rule of law in terms of youth justice. Uh, we've seen some attempts to fix that in the last 12 months. But there's been a real focus on um, not detaining children. Detention as a last resort is the principle in the Youth Justice Act. Now, that's still there. There is a proposal to modify it. Um, what we need to ensure this community is protected, I mean, one of the principles of sentencing is uh, community protection. Rehabilitation is another one. Now, you're not going to be able to protect the community if you don't put recidivism, uh, repeat offenders, uh, inside where they can't hurt the community and the problem we have up here is we have nowhere to put these repeat offenders and we now classify them as serious repeat offenders through a court declaration so it's done on evidence uh, we have nowhere to put them our youth detention centers are understaffed over capacity as indicated by the auditor general in the report that came out about two months ago so even if you uh, do try to uh, put these hardcore youth offenders inside there's nowhere for them to go the rehabilitation plans are quite poor, so when they come out, they're merely going to re-offend. So the justice system in terms of youth justice in Queensland is in total disarray. And the Premier uh, has argued this week since introducing their community safety plan that there has been a reduction in youth offending, but residents we're hearing from uh, are telling a very different story to that. Yeah, look, I've looked at the uh, crime data overall, not specifically youth offending, and crime in Queensland is uh, stable. It went up about 0.01% the crime rate last financial year. You saw property crime decrease, but offences against the person, robberies and assaults and the like, went up about 5%. So, you know, crime is still very problematic in Queensland. In 2023, our crime rate was the highest it has been for 20 years. So, you know, the fact that it's stabilised to some degree is no great claim to fame because it's still at historic highs. Uh, you, you may be seeing less child uh, youth offending because we've seen uh, some of those serious repeat offenders taken out of uh, circulation. But that's just, you know, kind of like stopping it. What we need to do is reduce it and prevent it from occurring uh, when they get back out. So, you know, we need to ensure the rehabilitation processes are there to address the causal factors of crime. So stopping it, putting them in incarceration uh, is one part of the puzzle, then solving the causes of crime is the other part of the puzzle. And at this point in time, the Queensland government seems to struggle with solving any part of the puzzle. Yeah. And in the lead up to the election, the opposition is doubling down on adult crime, adult time policy. Is that the answer in your view? And, and particularly, as you say, the issue is uh, there's nowhere to put these people. Yeah, look, it's a great catch prior. I mean, what essentially they're going to do is uh, modify a section uh, of the Youth Justice Act uh, that, allow, that prevents judges from sentencing a child to more than 10 years unless a crime is particularly heinous. So what that means is, like, murder, for instance, is a mandatory life sentence in Queensland. Now, there's a study done by the Sentencing Council up here, and it showed 
probably about uh, less than half of uh, you know the youth offenders over a five-year period got life imprisonment. Many of them got lesser terms. So they're looking at uh, the more serious offences, serious bodily harm, dangerous driving, etc., and ensuring that uh, children can be sentenced to more than 10 years for those offences. Um, I don't think it will happen at all because what we know is that you know having a maximum sentence is fine but judges will not sentence to the maximum. I mean, uh, for stolen vehicles, for instance, in Queensland, 10 years' worth of data told us that only 6% of youth offenders were sentenced to detention. And of those offenders, the average sentence was three months. So they'll never get anywhere near a maximum of 14 years, which we now have for unlawful use of motor vehicles in certain circumstances. So it really is, I think, uh, a bit of uh, smoke and mirrors raising the maximum. It'd be more sensible looking at looking what mandatory minimum sentences may impact in terms of serious repeat offenders, but no, uh, neither the LNP nor the Labor Party appear to uh, have the uh, intestinal fortitude to look at those kind of options. Terry, unfortunately, we have to leave it there, but appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks.